السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته معكم اخوكم عبد السلام والحين نبي نبدا متجر 5 بس قبل خلينا نسمع الكاسيت تيبس اللي عندي عشان نفهم شفت سالفة اللعبة. ايه. 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 When I got there, everything was still as it was. Even Skullface hadn't been touched. I can't see a reason to sneak into a place like that and drag out the biggest, heaviest guy there. What are you getting at? Me not the just that. Left is, he got up and walked away. That platform ran him over. Sorry, but it's something. You're saying that's not enough? I don't want to believe it, but maybe not. He shrugs off bullets, even rocket strikes. There's no reason to think that would finish him. Uh, I'll start gathering eyewitness accounts just in case. If you dig up anything concrete, I want to know. You'll be the first if I dig anything up. But I hope to hell I don't. No kidding. Kill the snake, or I'm gonna be shallow and say uranium enrichment archaea. This is yellow cake that Cipher was having the PF's transport. Before we met you, the boss recovered it from a truck crossing the savanna. Are there metallic archaea inside it? Yes, the archaea metabolize uranium-235 to subsist. They must be stored inside yellow cake, or they cannot survive. So those biological traces we took for impurities were actually the real cargo. Of course, they are deactivated, so they do not trigger a sudden enrichment. They are like baker's yeast. Yet, they do gradually enrich the uranium as they feed. I imagine you detected weapons-grade traces. Yeah, we did. And the Malachite that was loaded on the truck had traces of uranium in it, too. So that's the flower, huh? Skullface was gonna sell do-it-yourself new kits. The uranium enriching archaea <laughs> do it yourself. the user's manual. And the ores with the uranium could be sourced by the client or provided by Cipher. Even the trace amounts buried in common ores can be enriched to weapons-grade uranium by the metallic archaea. Proving that must have been the most important factor of the trials. That and the ability to successfully prevent detonation. So if the amounts of uranium in the ores are low enough, they can get past any inspection. And you only need a tiny amount of the archaea to act as the yeast. No great challenge to smuggle that either. The first step towards saturating the world with nukes. His plan. That was not my intention. <laughs> my What's only dick, goal in developing the metallic archaea was to save the Dine. Dine? What made you think a tool for Kanana. undetectable nuclear weapons would save your people? After 70 years. The Dine reclaimed the Navajo Nation. <laughs> we bore all the hardships of poverty. But we were proud to live off the land we called our own. But in the moment the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima, everything changed. I don't get it. The nuclear arms race between the US and the Soviet Union began with the end of the Second World War. Suddenly, there was a massive demand for uranium. And it was our ill fortune that the ground beneath the Navajo Nation was rich with uranium ore. The Black Anna government set up mine after mine, and many of the Diné worked them, never informed of any danger. Every day, they went to work with no protection. The slag was simply piled out in the open. When rain fell, uranium traces left behind would seep out, and when the ground dried, it was blown about as dust. Land and water were contaminated, irradiated. Many of us became sick and died. Ouch. That pain lives on to this day. 
بس لاحظ شخصية مثل جير ذا الجوز كل واحد بينهم عندهم ألم والله كود تاك كل ما جاي يسوي شيء يجي سكول فيس يخرب عليه وبيخرب عليه عفوا يصير شيء يعني ناوي ينقذ هو طيب الرجال بس لحظه مزفت بالنسبة البدء حق تسكر راح تخليني اختفي واصير حصل فما راح اقدر اتحكم بالجو I was already over the conscription age. 
However, I was made to help craft the codes that were spoken. So in a wider sense, you could call me a code talker for that. Navajo is a complex language, and virtually no one outside the U.S. speaks it. The master thought it was the perfect language to use as a code. Yeah, in the end, the Japanese never cracked it. The cipher is king in information warfare. Of course, they didn't simply speak in Navajo. They created substitutions for words according to a code book, and then translated those into our language. Young Diné was sent to the front lines of the Pacific Theater as code talkers. To fight is an honor for the Diné. They were the pride of our people. But I cannot say this history brings me joy. Words are alive. When they are spoken, life is breathed into them. They become a part of the listener. Our words were transformed into lifeless ciphers and used for war. This, after the Black Anna spent generations suppressing the language. Yeah, I'm sorry. So I guess we shouldn't be calling you code talker, huh? No, I do not mind. The reason Skullface called me code talker was because I also am responsible for coding language into the vocal cord parasites. Okay. I am the same as those young warriors, used for a cipher's sake. I must never forget that. The name, Code Talker, is a lesson carved into my being. You said Skullface ordered you to weaponize the vocal cord parasites. But you also said he wasn't the reason. And he wasn't. I was seduced by the parasites. That is a fact. <laughs> How? You mean from your curiosity as a scientist? That I cannot deny. But there is more to it. The story goes back to the 19th century. To my earliest memory. One day, a man from the government visited our Hogan, our home. I cried as he yanked me from my mother's arms and took me away to an Indian boarding school. From that day forward, I became George. This was the name my teacher gave me. I was forced to give up my Diné name, forbidden from speaking anything but English. If we dared utter a word of filthy Navajo, the teacher made us eat a bar of soap. Oh, I am shattered. That was the U.S. government's education policy for Native Americans. To erase our words. Shattered. Sabuna, يعني كاملة. Their education was tantamount to ethnic cleansing. Over time, the overt persecution of our language stopped. But to this day, it continues to be eaten away by the lingua franca, that is English. Many of the Diné outside the reservations can speak nothing else. And it isn't just our language. Across the world, minority languages are being destroyed by dominant languages. Many are on the verge of extinction. Mm. Enter the vocal cord parasites. Yes. I began thinking that minority languages needed some sort of deterrent against dominant languages. In order that they, that their peoples and cultures would survive. It was then that I came across literature at the foundation claiming that man acquired language thanks to a type of parasite. One that distinguishes between languages as a precursor to reproduction. If I could just resurrect it, make it more pathogenic, I would have my deterrent against English. But I failed to hide that aim from Skullface. He noticed. Yes, I wanted to retaliate against the English language. Though never did I intend to actually use it as he planned. You know how the story ends. I was forced to study how to make the parasites compatible with all the world's languages. All but English. However, he in fact secretly isolated an English strain. I will not be held prisoner by the man's phantom. The English strain must not be allowed to exist either. Hello. 
خلصنا الحين كم باك او باقي لنا اه خلاص ما بقى لنا شيء سكال فيس 9 years ago some interesting facts about our skull faced friend 9 years ago he was exiled to south africa stripped of political power the upshot said he ceased being a serious threat in cypher's eyes anyway they eased up on surveillance giving him an opening to establish his own military unit one that answered to his will alone those men likely had no idea their orders were coming from skullface they probably didn't even know the organization was a part of cypher at all anyway it was in south africa where he found renewed interest in parasites and when he discovered <laughs> wipe the English language out of existence. Free the world, not by taking men's lives, but by taking their tongues. In his life, the world's ever known isn't microbial. It's linguistic. Words are what keep civilization, our world, alive. There was something Skullface said. I'm burning up! Ah. made up of many peoples. But those peoples never mix. Quite so. One nation, home to hundreds of different ethnic groups. Many of whom stick to their respective living areas. Little colonies, not interacting with other groups. Going out of their way to avoid one another. Their land, organizations, relationships. Thus, the United States of America is no melting pot. It is more of a salad bowl. Salad bowl. It is not made up from one people. But for its minorities to function in society, a common ground is needed. Language. Language. Even if the country is not one. No, because it's not one, a lingua franca is necessary. English. American hegemonism was born from the illusion that English could unite diverse ethnicities. In taking in people from around the globe, America became a microcosm of it. Now the boundaries between it and the rest of the world have become blurred. However different our neighbors may be, English enables us to create symbiotic relationships with each other. If English can bring unacquainted neighbors together in America, this should hold true for the world. This salad bowl that is the world can also become one. A ruler's greatest wealth is not money or land. It is the number of individuals under his control. Subjects who work, consume, are there to be used as pawns in war. For a capitalist ruler, his people's power becomes his power. You are the same with your diamond dogs. You spin it with your speeches. But what you're doing is bringing as much talent as you can into your little domain. Every person another feather in your cap. Yes. Since ancient times, every civilization's ruler has had the same idea. When people unite under one will, they become stronger than the sum of their parts. And the one will is the ruler's will. And what do rulers use to bring people together? Language. In the Old Testament, it is written that only one language was spoken in Eden. A shared tongue that united all of humanity. Mankind eventually grew aware of its power and harnessed that strength to build a tower to the heavens. The mighty Tower of Babel. This angered God, who splintered the language of man and the tower was never completed. Languages emerged, and the earth was divided as men went their separate ways. Every age is the same. A ruler's first order of business 
after conquering new land is to force its tongue on its people. Ancient Rome, Napoleon, and now Zero. English is wrecking havoc around the world right now. The British Empire tilled the land with war as its hoe, then began planting the seed that is English. Eventually, American capitalism became the new instrument. To play its game of wealth, you only had to abide by one rule, English. By exploiting people's desires, English has become a leash that people gladly wear around their necks, it would seem. يعني باختصار لا اعطيك اختصار كسيتي بس هذول كلهن اللغه موجوده واللغه هي اهم شيء بالدنيا هذه اختصاره خلينا نسمع الحين يوم يوم كود تاكر يبي همبرجر من كاز But there is more to the act of eating than nourishment. We receive nature's blessings, and we affirm our part in it. And in doing okay. so, we express our gratitude. <laughs> Sorry, it's um, hearing you say you don't need to eat and that you're a part of nature in the same breath. Anyway, <laughs> uh, what can we get you? Not exactly a five-star restaurant, but... The kitchen's used to serving a lot of different appetites. Hamburgers. Hamburgers? <laughs> Hamburgers. Even we, Binne, have become Americanized. I eat them often back home. <laughs> And you just can't let them go. Well, as far as symbols of the American Empire go, hamburgers are pretty good. The victory of capitalism. Hmm. <laughs> Your people suffered so much at the hands of America, and you asked for hamburgers. We have suffered more than you can know, but I do not see hamburgers as an accomplice. <laughs> I do not see hamburgers as an accomplice. Providing a balanced helping of nature's blessings. Meat, grain, and vegetable. How could anyone hate such a magnificent thing? <laughs> Sadik, Sadik. Balance has nothing to do with it. You just like a good burger. That is also true. Be warned, though. I have very high standards. Uh oh. Uh, don't worry. I do too. All right then. One good old-fashioned all-American icon coming up. <laughs> I look forward to it. ابغى ابغى ميني جيم بني ميني جيم بني العب كاز يبدا هو يسوي الهامبرجر زي كوكينج ماما على الدي اس ما عندي اي مشكله هذه والله اللي اشتريها حتى بعد لو كانت اضافه يلا عاد الحين خلينا نترك الكسيت تيبس خلينا نروح نسوي المهمه الفرعيه الاساسيه The Secret Remnants of the Man on Fire يس يلا الحين بنروح نرجع فولكن ان شاء الله اللودين قاعد الحين ما يطول اي صح ما به بدايه ولا شيء أجل وقتكم قرأت اللعبة اللي نحن متى قلت لكم أوه هل هذا هو فولكن؟ ما يحتاج تقولوا لي ترى يدار إنه فولكن نفول فولكن يعني صار في صار في الاسم فولكن
the remnants of remnants of the fire man of fire. Oh, I did not get. Analysis complete. هذا خلص أول فولتن. هي صح سيد داعي تشتغل. اللي واضح إنه فولكن حتى بعد من نفس البدلة الحمراء اللي يلبسها. هي البدلة اللي بس من قاتله. I'm not going to go. شوف العرايس حقت اللي حقت شنو تخربوا المشهد ورا يب الو فولكن Oh, he's gonna go borrow, go borrow. Oh, this is the boss. The boss. بحطه بالطيارة اكيد ما راح يصير شيء طبعا احنا بطلع لازم نخلص مهمات فرعية عشان نقدر نطلع مهمات اساسية اذا بغينا يعني في عشان نطلع مهمات اساسية اذا بغينا عشان نكمل الشابتر 2 
I barely recognize you, Colonel. Skullface used your thirst for revenge against Big Boss, did he? حصلت. وعد خانو ب بالنهاية. طيب اذا اخذنا مهمات جديده ها ما في فرعيات لا والله في في كم اي هذول عرفت فرعيات تركب الحاله او اربع مهمات جدد اكستريم هذه ما علينا منها كيرس ليجسي ذا كود تاك ريسيرش ماتيريال توتال ستيلث يب هذه اكسترا اكستريم مو اكسترا اكستريم لا اكستريم ما عرفت هذا هذول اللي ما لهم داعي ذولي الاكستريم هذول اسوي لهم ما نبي نتوقع اني بسويها نبي اسوي الاساسيات بس والسايد والسايد ما اتوقع اني بسوي لان ما انا محتاج اشوف بعدين طبعا مع الوقت بس قبل الحين خلينا نروح لما وش كان اسمه هي؟ او شو اول شيء اطلع من هنا خبر في درج درجة في السلم يب هذاك هناك خلنا الحين نبي نروح لمباز نعطي اخر صورة ان شاء الله ما في كاسيت تيبس او الا في اربعة with a shadow hog during Operation Snake Eater Roger. Despite suffering severe burns to his entire body, he still clung to life. After you left Seleniarsk, Volgan's body was taken to a research institute in the outskirts of Moscow. Modern medicine couldn't explain why he was still alive. Not that the Colonel was any ordinary man to begin with. That constant electric current he had running through his body that he could unleash at will, To be honest, I was always uncomfortable around him. Thought I might get electrocuted just by standing nearby. Nada. شوف في داعي الحين مفروض تبدأ. أنا خلنا مفروض يطير كذا على طول. Hmm. شكله في داعي تبدأ لأن ما خبر سو السكيب. Stay back. It's too dangerous. Hey. Rahm, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. هم في شيء خطر. سالفة. سبحان الله أنتم أنتم عطيتهم ملابس ولا شيء نسونا. صار. Shabani, Mayaka Nine Kingo Ya Shabani. It's down there. Hey, the tank at the bottom is filled with chlorine disinfectant. One whiff and you'll suffocate. Yikes. I fucking know what to say. How could you let it fall down there anyway? شلون جا الخاز؟ أكيد ليكويد. بيه. 
وايد بس حسيت هي معي هي رئاته محترقه Listen to me. There is no way to recover the body. Hey, the atom is dark. Quiet. I'm just looking at them. I'm not going to be wearing a hat. We're going to have to start the game. كما ماتت بس جلده محترق كان هذا عشان عشان القلاده بس ولا اخذت قلاده بعد ما عليك يا ميلر ما عليك يا ميلر عاد مو بصدق بتحرك قلاده وبتذبحك اه ميلر تحس انك زفت شوي صار علي هنا هي ولا لا في اكيد بني جوا هناك الحين وصلنا بالكاسيتين اه كان ذا مان اوف فاير هنا Modern medicine could not that the colonel was any ordinary man to begin with. That constant electric current he had running through his body that he could unleash at will. To be honest, I was always uncomfortable around him. Thought I might get electrocuted just by standing nearby. The institute studying him was tasked with investigating and developing human paranormal abilities. The comatose Volgin was used to further the Soviet Union's research into such abilities. But not long ago, the facility burned to the ground, and Volgan's body was never found among the rubble. Even when the fire started in the room where they were keeping it, this occurred at around the same time you woke up. If Skullface was right, and a thirst for revenge can turn a man into a demon and keep the dead alive, and this man on fire who's been coming after us ever since you woke up. Well, that just might be what's left of our old friend Volga. It's not over yet. Back in '64, in Selenyarsk, you brought his plans for a utopia down in flames. That grudge is what's keeping him alive. The day the research facility holding Volga burned down, a Soviet jumbo passenger jet happened to crash nearby, far away to the north of that hospital in Cyprus. On board the plane was a young boy who was being studied at the same facility. The plane fell to earth from over 8,000 feet. The boy's body was the only one not recovered. At almost exactly the same time as the crash, Volgan awoke in that facility. According to the Research Institute's documents, the gifts this boy demonstrated included psychokinesis and telepathy. To protect his mind from being inundated with other people's thoughts, he always wore a kind of gas mask. A rudimentary form of psychic insulation, apparently. We don't know where this boy is, but if Skullface is connected to him, we may cross paths with him yet. This boy is part of a new age, where nothing we understand about the world makes sense anymore. Don't let your guard down. I need him, Mick. يلا خلنا نشوف باز الحين 
ما راح تصير فرحانه هي لو تدري انا ليش جاي تذكرين هالشيء الفظيع اللي صار ما في أي حفلة. ذكري. ما تدري انك تريد الملاك للسلام عكس الشيطان خربت علينا كل شيء بيس ووكر طيب طب الصورة ابغاها وينها؟ يب ظل حل ظل الحين راح تشتغل الداعي حين لو ارجع انا ما اظن طالع يمكن بعدين اجد هليكوبتر بيك اب هنا يلا فيك واحد احتريك ما عليك والله ما نطلقنا عليك بسم الله اه نسيت اتروش أنا أسمع آخر اثنين كسات تيبس الفوكال كولد باراسايت The Devil's House هل اسم ذا ما راح أطفش من الزودوية زوية الدوية بولو Mutations, 
Correct. Playing the tapes helps to identify the mutant strains. Those specimens are then isolated and bred with one another. From the that's children, it. specimens that react more strongly to Portuguese can again be selected and bred. Repeating this process creates a strain that reacts solely to Portuguese and never to Spanish. Mutation and selection. No different to breeding roses. So you kept increasing the change over the generations, adapting them to languages from all over the world. Must have taken a hell of a lot of patience. More like patience. Just how many died for this? There's something I still don't get. In order to tell which larvae will react to Portuguese, you'd have to let them develop and then see which copulate. That means you'd need tens of thousands of guinea pigs. There's no way you could do that in a facility that small. For normal selective breeding methods, you would be right. But there is a more effective selection method when training the vocal cord parasites. <laughs> Go on. It is not only when mating that the parasites listen for language. Shortly before hatching, larvae display markedly increased activity in reaction to particular language. Activity identified under a black light. So the eggs that react to Portuguese are selectively placed in the throats of subjects. So you see. Narrowing down strains that react to the target language is an effective process. Though I'm sure that even so, many lost their lives to create the various strains. Taken against their will into that... that dungeon. There are two reasons for playing the tapes for the parasites. One, to isolate the eggs that respond to the target language. And two, to cause the specimens raised from the selected eggs to mate. I get how the system works. But why do they respond to language before they even hatch? It's not like they can mate from inside an egg. It is because the larvae learn the language before hatching. You mentioned that what language the parasites respond to is hard-coded into their genes. And that they don't have the brain power to actually learn a language. But then you say that the larvae at Nzoya Badia Bulu were learning the languages in the egg. Your story doesn't add up. Your country is home to a unique songbird. The Japanese bush warbler. Sure, what of it? What a beautiful call it has. But no bush warbler can sing it perfectly at the start. As chicks, they can barely chirp at all. They must learn from their parents and other adult birds. Only then can they sing properly and attract females. So naturally, there are individual differences in each bird's call. Though they start on the same footing, each bird is influenced by its teachers. And the parasites are the same? Like the birds, the parasites language but while in the egg the larvae's ears are tweaked by listening to the voice of the host this tweaking ensures that the grown parasites will react better to the host's speech pattern why would they have an ability like that well there are distinct regional differences within even the same language rare is the language that has no unique dialects yes Learning the host's speech pattern before hatching attunes the larvae to whatever twist of pronunciation it will encounter. This adaptive ability is what makes them so formidable. I see. So a language requires selective breeding, but the parasites can learn dialects by themselves. Of course, having the egg stage larvae listen to the tapes in the factory was not meant to teach them. It was more important to use that trait of theirs to identify the mutated strains. As I mentioned earlier, is that really accurate enough to use as a weapon? You could wipe out a neighboring ethnic group by accident if their pronunciation is too close. What you say is true, 
In that sense, they are imperfect as ethnic cleansers. But for his purposes, they are good enough. His objective was not to exterminate any one ethnic group, but to render the world's lingua franca, English, inert. أساتر. إن شاء الله تكون كش يعني ما أتوقع إن هذا راح يكون كسنتي بحالياً. لأن إحنا الحين بستو بستو ما في دعايات فأكثر راح تكون كسنتي تيبس راح أوقف مقطع الحين شباب يعطيكم ألف عافية على المشاهدة إن شاء الله يرجعنا راح نكمل القصة الحين عاد لأن هذا الجزء كله كانت بس يعني بدت القصة بدت تجي يعني أكثر الشخصيات يلا كمان أخوكم عبد السلام يعطيكم ألف عافية على المشاهدة ومع السلامة